Next question is from Tyler McNutrition. Any tips on knowing when to push a client to do more reps and when to back off? How do I know the difference between true physical exhaustion or them mentally giving up? Well, so here's the thing when you're hmm. when you're training clients, you're training both. You're training both physical strength and durability and also their mental uh, their ability to to withstand pain um, and to handle the training. And honestly, uh, it doesn't matter which which one. It, it, when I would train clients and I knew they could do more reps, but I knew that they mentally couldn't do more reps. Like I knew physically they could do more, mm -hmm. but mentally they were breaking down. That's okay. We'll stop the set. And then what I do is gradually, slowly over time, I'll challenge that. Same thing if it was a physical limit. I'll gradually uh, challenge that over time. But when you're training your clients, make no mistake, you're training the mental part as much or more than the physical part. Oh, this is we kind of addressed this not that long ago about well, where we would use the slowing down the tempo. So here's an example, like when if I'm like wondering, oh gosh, can I push my clients or add more weight or add more repetitions? What I'll do is I'll, I'll instead of risking that because obviously if I add more weight or add more volume to the workout, I'm technically could put them at risk. And if I'm concerned about that at all, I'm always going to go in the direction of slowing down the the tempo and mm -hmm. and going that way first before giving them more in the workout, whether that be more sets and more reps or more weight, I'll challenge them that way. And you can still get the 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 mental benefits of, of pushing them through that. I think this is why this is like such a more intimate uh, experience than people realize because yep. we're so like as trainers, the good ones really try to hone in on everything that makes this person tick in terms of their body language, uh, you know, their, their energy levels, the feedback they're giving you verbally, like you're, you're, you're picking up on all these cues constantly as you're presenting them these challenges. And so, uh, you can start to read them really well, uh, based off of like whatever they're dealing with at work or the conversation where that's going, totally. okay, they're really high stress right now. And so you just start adjusting things for them without really them having to say it. Once you get really in tune with that person. And I just think that that's, that's, that's all part of the experience of training somebody is to, uh, really look, uh, you know, further into the, the signs of, 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 mm -hmm. you know, what they're, what they're providing you. And so you got to be very present in, in those sessions with that person to, to do a good job with that, but it's experimental. So, I mean, you're going to see, <laughs> you're going to see the wincing and, you know, all these, 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 you know, the, the signs of pain and discomfort and all that. And so you kind of back off, but then you, you could tell if, they're faking it or, 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 if, or if it's something like, you know, that you could kind of joke, you know, about and, and kind of make them more comfortable with and, and educate them on, well, let's kind of push a little harder, or, you know, or back off, or you're just going to know a lot more than them because they're providing you all the feedback. Yeah. You know, it's funny is that I just remembered this. Uh, this is a skill you develop as a trainer uh, and clients would always comment on this. In fact, my son did uh, a few weeks ago where I was training him and I'll say something like seven more reps. And you'll be like, oh, I could do way more than that. But like, let's stop at seven. And then mm -hmm. you'll get to seven. You'll be like, how did you know? Yeah. How did you know I could only do seven more? That's a good point. And clients would say that to me yeah. all the time. To see whether they're moving. How do you always know that I can only do this many or how many mm -hmm. reps I could do? You can tell. You can. And it's a very hard, it's hard to explain how mm -hmm. you could tell. Well, there's, there's subtle cues I can give you hints. Like, so it's natural default. What people will start to do is it gets, it starts to get challenging. They'll speed up the repetition, right? Yep. So they, they, they go, like maybe you told them, you know, oh, four seconds on the way down to, you mm -hmm. know, you're kind of, you tell them. start making more noises. Yeah, yeah, right or they'll start the form will deviate. You know, you start to see movement in the elbows or the shoulders, depending on what move or exercise we're doing. So you'll see them starting to, they're trying to cheat for leverage and mm -hmm. it, it'll be just the most subtle thing you'll see at first before it gets bad, right? But you start to see those, those subtleties of them starting to cheat or speed up. And I already know, okay, it's kicking in and feeling we've got maybe three or five more. Mm -hmm. And you've seen that enough times and you can pretty much guess that as a trainer. Yeah, yep. it's, it's, all, it's always a lot of fun to be, <laughs> to be able to do that and for clients to be like, how, how did You're you? like a magician. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm, I'm just a wizard. No. <laughs>